YouTube, what's up? I am very excited. I am in my happy, excited place in the forest. Um, this, this is the fly agaric or Amanita muscaria. Um, and we're gonna find out whether this well-known, iconic toadstool, if you like, or mushroom, can be delicious. <sighs> Loads to say about it. Stay with me. I want to tell you all about this mushroom, and then we're going to eat it. Fatalities occur every year from misidentification and consumption of toxic species of fungi. This video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Do not try this at home. Amanita muscaria, or the fly agaric, an iconic mushroom of myth and legend. It's in our fiction, our fairy tales, our folklore, our stories from Alice in Wonderland to Super Mario. It can be both poisonous and psychoactive, with claims of its historical use running wild and far. Was it an ingredient in the ancient Greek psychoactive brew Kaikion used at the Eleusinian Mysteries? Was it the sacred plant Soma, mentioned in the ancient Rig Veda Hindu text. The author John Allegro even posed the notion that this mushroom could be the root of Christianity. What does it have to do with Christmas? And more importantly, is it edible? What we do know about this mushroom is that the toxins involved in Amanita muscaria poisoning, the main ones are ibotenic acid and muscimol. Muscimol is the product of the decarboxylation of ibotenic acid and supposedly the main psychoactive ingredient in this mushroom. I've been fascinated with this mushroom for years uh, as an amateur mycophile uh, and my vast meanderings online, I've come across one or two people that claim to eat this mushroom as a gastronomic species, not for its psychoactive properties. I'm setting out to find the truth behind this claim and lay to rest once and for all whether Amanita muscaria can be considered an edible species. Will it be mushrooms on toast or a cosmic kick in the nuts? Stay with me, like, subscribe. This is Global Food Quest on Amanita muscaria. The fly agaric mushroom has been used by the Sami people of northern Scandinavia for centuries. It's said to be as valuable to them as reindeer. So here's where shamanic mushroom culture and the story of Santa Claus begin to cross over. Okay, Santa Claus, are you ready? Bear with me. So, the people would come around selling this red and white mushroom, the fly agaric, uh, to people's yurts. When snow drifts were high, people would often enter the yurt through the middle, the chimney, drying the mushrooms in sacks in front of the fires, red and white mushrooms. The Santa Claus parallels are close. Now, it's also true that reindeers do love to eat this mushroom. And we also know that the body processes the ibotanic acid, turning it into our psychoactive compound muscimol. So you can harvest the urine of a reindeer or a person uh, to get its psychoactive effects. Hence the phrase, getting pissed. Believable? Too far? Too far, Klaus? I'll let you do the research and decide. But that is Santa Claus and the Fly Garrick. I'm gonna show you the whole specimen. Uh, it comes from a family of mushrooms known as the Amanitas, um, characterized by this vulval bag that they grow out of at the bottom. Um, you can see as well, it's got uh, the old remnants of the veil there that used to cover it when it was young. Um, and of course, the red cap, white gills, and the spots left on top of the cap. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the most deadly families of fungi there is. It also has the destroying angel, the death cat that a lot of you will have heard of. Um, responsible for killing people every single year. Uh, it's a horrific death. Um, it takes up to 12 days to die. There's no known antidote as far as I know currently. Um, and you'll consume the mushroom, uh, then the amatoxins within it, 
uh, start to destroy your liver and kidneys. Uh, after about three days, it looks like you suddenly got well after being really sick. There's a moment of recovery, followed by six more days of long, painful, slow death. So don't eat them. Don't, just, just don't eat them. Anyway, we're, we're harvesting these guys. So much more to say on this mushroom. What we can also say is that reports on the effects of the consumption of Amanita muscaria vary greatly. Trip reports on Eroid range from nothing to full-blown delirium and entity contact. People have died eating this mushroom and it comes from a genus called the Amanitas that have some of the most deadly fungi on the planet in, the aptly named Death Cap and the Destroying Angel. But it would seem many factors come into play here. What time of year the mushroom was picked, where it was picked, and how it was processed. So I have taken when I'm actually walking around these forests in Northern Europe to holding my foraging knife in my hand because I disturbed two massive tusky wild boars before, but luckily ran the other way. And I was in Estonia once and then learned that there was bears around after foraging. So, I mean, you know, don't know how much luck I give myself with that, but let's be prepared. Okay, I found a bunch here, so time to harvest. So, from bayareamushrooms.org, a modern Lithuanian field guide stated that muscaria was poisonous, but also eaten in mountainous France and Austria. No word about Lithuanian edibility practices, though, despite an apparent historical tradition of muscaria inebriation. The main market for muscaria in Eastern Europe seems to be in high potency dried muscaria caps harvested in Latvia and Bulgaria and then sold online for scientific purposes. Beware of what is sometimes called deadly home research. Okay, so I'm back in the kitchen. Uh, I've got some water boiling and I've got to tell you that these look like the least edible fungi I have ever picked, or fungi, if you're American. Um, there's a lot to say about this. Um, now, I don't have Klaus here, he's my normal cameraman. He, he makes everything look amazing, so we're left with selfie cam, but I, I think for the sake of this piece of content, we can deal with this. Um, this mushroom is eaten by some, by very few people. But, but this mushroom is eaten as a gastronomic species. In fact, uh, a lot of people in Estonia and some of the Baltic states and Eastern Europe regularly eat fungi that uh, the rest of Western Europe wouldn't touch that we consider toxic. Now, they do this by processing them first. They boil the mushrooms most of the time um, and cast away the water. Uh, before eating them, which is what we are going to do with our Amanita muscaria, our fly agaric. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. I mean, I do have some experience with this uh, as a young foolish man, um, used in a different capacity. Uh, but you know, I don't, we don't want any of that today. I'm a dad, I got two kids. I don't wanna be losing the plot. What we are here to discover is whether those rumours are true. Whether Amanita muscaria, the fly agaric, can be a gastronomic species. We're just 10 minutes into the boiling process, and you can see the colour beginning to leach out from the caps. <laughs> There's a distinct smell of wet dog in here. Anyway, we're gonna discard this water, fill it up again, boil again. It's the next day. So, I boiled those three times. I discarded the water three times yesterday. I also had vinegar and salt in there. Um, and now we're left with this. 
The caps have leached all their colour out. And I'm going to discard that final water. And now I don't want to eat that because it just, look at that. It's a grey mass of kind of not very niceness. I'm going to dry it out to make it hard and reconstitute it. Then hard fry it. Then we'll know if Amanita muscaria is delicious. Poisonous or still psychoactive. And here they are. <laughs> I mean, mushrooms are 90% water. They don't look <laughs> very appetizing. Um, but I'm gonna fry them now. Uh, am I gonna consume them? Let's find out. Man, they smell weird. They smell, they don't smell, they smell a bit chemically. That's the truth. I, I am frying these up with just butter. That's it, I want <laughs> nothing to get in the way of the flavor of these mushrooms. They're gonna be weird. And there we have it. Processed, boiled, hard, fried, Amanita muscaria the fly agaric in butter. Leathery, mushroomy. They don't taste great, they don't taste terrible. I mean, we have bastardized them. So if the psychoactive effects of these are to be felt, they normally begin to come on in about 20 minutes. So I'll check in soon, because these are hard to chew. I mean, you know, sliced, hard fried, salted, with a sauce, in a sauce, on top of something. Maybe we'll get there. I mean, <laughs> this is, if this does work, this is foraging out of necessity. Checking in 20 minutes. All right, so 20 minutes has gone by. I'm feeling uh, a little bit weird, but that's normal. I normally feel a little bit weird. Other than that, I, I think we're at ground zero still. So I'm just gonna sit here, chill, and uh, check back in in another 30 minutes on the hour mark. Okay, this is a two hour mark and I can still conclude there are no detectable psychoactive effects. The Amanita muscaria is psychoactive, but it's not classed as a classic psychedelic, more of a delirium. I can also conclude that two mushrooms picked at the beginning of November from the forest of Berlin, prepared as I did, were edible. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not something I'm going to be repeating again soon. Share this video if you liked it. Like, subscribe, it really helps us. I'll see you next week all. Much love. Voila. <laughs> Top of the morning all. 24 hours after our little experiment. Thought I'd check in just to say I'm still alive. To the annoyance of some, but what are you going to do? Cup of tea. Cheers.